What's up guys? So there's a new phenomena on the way where people are trying to make money online, right? So with, with the whole lockdown, uh, with, with what's going on with COVID-19, with unemployment soaring past 20%, people are looking for ways to make money in the comfort of their home. And one of the best ways to do that is through active day trading. So I just saw some, uh, some data on uh, the app called Robinhood and Robinhood's downloads are up tenfold. Uh, day trading volume is up uh, three times the amount it was in December. So that means there's a lot of new participants to the market and there's a lot of people interested in learning how to day trade. And so in this video, what I'm gonna be talking about is how you can qualify for trader status. And trader status just allows you to do a couple of things. So keep it locked. So if you're new to the channel, I wanted to welcome you. My name is Brian Rivera uh, and I hold many, many hats. Uh, I classify myself as a serial entrepreneur. So one, I'm the managing partner of Trader Tax CPA. So we are a cloud-based CPA firm located in Orlando, Florida. And so we service clients all across the US. So if you're an active day trader and you are finding it difficult to navigate the tax law, you know, that's where we come in and, and that's, the, that's the value we provide to a lot of our clients. So in addition to running Trader Tax CPA, I'm also an active day trader myself. I've been trading the market since 2014 successfully. And so I typically trade about an hour or two a day before tending to uh, other business activities. But I love trading and as you can see behind me, I've actually got my setup going. In addition to that, I'm also in the Army Reserves where I've been serving for about 14 years now as a commissioned officer. Uh, I continue to, to serve in the reserve capacity where you know I do you know the cliche, the cliche thing where they say you know two weekends a month or, or two days a month and then two weeks in the summer yeah that's me so I continue to serve now where I, I, I'm currently at the rank of major and hopefully I can hold on for the next five to six years and get that retirement so recently I just did a consultation with a prospective client and you know he had just been recently laid off his job due to COVID-19 like I mentioned earlier the the unemployment numbers are, are off the chart and so you know thankfully he has enough bankroll to fund you know his living expenses and he thought this would be a good time to transition to day trading and so he reached out to us you know via our website to book a consultation and one of the things he wanted to do is one he wanted to make sure that he can strategize what his tax uh, reporting requirements will be going forward and two to make sure that um, any expenses that he's investing in things like education that he's capturing so that way these are not lost costs from a tax perspective so I mentioned to him that there is a way that he can do it. And the simplest way is going to be to qualify for trader status. And so I'm going to talk a little bit more about this uh, as the video goes, but trader status is essentially what you need to strive to achieve uh, to make sure that in the eyes of the IRS, you qualify as an active day trader. So I currently run trader tax CPA. So we have hundreds of clients across the U S where, we have been able to one, see a lot of different data and two, uh, make sure that we are coaching our clients and we're guiding them in the right direction to make sure that they save the optimal amount of taxes and also putting themselves in a position for long-term success so that they can focus on trading the stock market. So if you're looking to see where this criteria actually comes from, the criteria is based on IRS tax topic 429. You can Google it, uh, it's, it's readily available on the IRS. And at first glance, when you first take a look at it, on the surface, you're gonna to say to yourself, what did I just read? So I'm gonna give you a brief excerpt of exactly what that says. So it says, you must seek to profit from daily market movements in the prices of securities and not dividends, interest, or capital appreciation. You must carry on the activity with continuity and regularity. You know, those are the first two bullet points which are very boilerplate. And then it goes a little bit further to say that your typical holding periods for securities bought and sold, the frequency and dollar amount of your trades during the year, the extent to which you pursue the activity to produce income for a livelihood and the amount of time that you devote to the activity. So if you read that guidance, you have no idea if you qualify as a trader. So thankfully with my military background, you know the, the thing I love about the military is they simplify everything and we have an acronym for everything. So one of the things that we've developed within our CPA firm and what we put all of our clients through is we have something called the behave test, or we say that 
in order to qualify for trader status, a trader must behave. So the B in the behaves test stands for business expenses customary to an active day trader. So if you are executing your trading business, there are going to be a lot of expenses that you incur just in the normal course of business. And these are reasonable and necessary to execute. So for example, if you're a short seller, you may have hard to borrow interest or locate fees. If you have a, um, a brokerage account that you pay for data feeds, if you subscribe to a newswire service like Benzinga Pro, that's something that I use. If you use um, different scanners like Trade Ideas or, I don't know, Equity Feed, there's a lot of different scanners out there that you can use. And all these things are deductible if you qualify as a trader. So leave us a comment below and you know, if there's any business expenses that you may have incurred that you, know, you wanna share with, with the group. So the E in the behave test stands for equipment used for trading. So if you look behind me, I've got three monitors. I've got a, uh, a desktop, a pretty powerful desktop, and this allows me to execute my trading business. So we typically like to see uh, equipment used in the normal course of business. I know some guys trade off of a phone or some trade off an iPad and some get to the point where they have multiple, multiple monitors. So this is just another drop in the bucket or proving the case for trader status. So we typically like to see that a trader has equipment used in the execution of their trading business. So when you look at the behave test, the H stands for hours in the market. So typically on average, a day trader will typically spend four hours in the market now this includes both research, technical analysis, fundamental analysis, um, data review, back testing, all those good things. So it's not four hours of consistently trading, it is four hours spent carrying out your craft. The stock market is, depending on which market you trade, uh, like for example, if you trade equities or options, you know the market opens at 9.30 and closes at 4.30 but there's also pre-market trading and there's also after hours trading. So there's a huge window of time that you can actually execute your trades and also plan your trades. So the sweet spot that the IRS likes to see is four hours. So when we look at V in that acronym BEHAVE, we like to see volume north of about 720 trades. Now, if we dissect this a little bit further, a trade means one buy or one sell. So let's just say for an example, I wanted to trade Apple, right? And I wanted to get 500 shares. So if I bought 500 shares in one swoop, that would be considered one trade. And if I turned around and sold 500 shares in one swoop, that would be considered two trades. Now, if I scale into my position, let's just say I wanted to get 500 shares by breaking that up into five 100 share orders. So I would just say, okay, 100, 100, 100, 100, that would be five buys. And if I scaled out of that position in the same uh, manner, that would be considered five sales, which that gets me to 10. So typically traders have no problem meeting the volume test if they are actively trading. You know, that is definitely something to keep in mind when you're actually carrying out your activity. Now, if you're a swing trader, you need to be a little bit more active, uh, but I don't think this is unreasonable for an active day trader to meet this criteria. So the E in the behave test stands for extent at which you execute your trading. So the IRS likes to see continuity and regularity. So if you trade the US equities market, the market is open 252 days out of the year. That includes market holidays. So the IRS likes to see 75% of available days traded in the market. So that comes out to about 189 days. So in my experience, this is by far the hardest metric to meet in the behave test because you know there are some traders who may trade one day here take a day off maybe they took a bad loss they need to take a month off you know there's a lot of things that could happen in the normal course of business and so this is always the one that gets guys and so my recommendation is to make sure that you are remaining active even if the volume is not there or the share size is not there but this is the biggest metric or, or criteria that uh, eliminates traders from claiming trader status for tax purposes. All right, so now that you have a general idea of what the behave test encompasses, the other thing that you want to make sure that you are cognizant of is that you must also possess the intent to operate a business or to make a living. Um, so you're not just trading, you know, as, as a hobby or you're just treating it as gambling, like you're truly treating this as a profession. The other thing we like to see is that 
do you have an account over the pattern day trader rule? So if you don't know what the pattern day trader rule is, the pattern day tra trader rule basically says that if you do not have a minimum equity balance of $25,000, you can only place a trade on three out of five uh, rolling market days. So if you look at our math behind uh, the extent test, we like to see 189 days. So if you are below the pattern day trader rule, this is gonna be very difficult for you to qualify for. Now, I have seen ways around it where guys may trade offshore or they may have some other type of an arrangement. So it's not a complete, you know, holy grail, but if you meet all the other criteria, then typically our firm will pass you as, as an active day trader. Now, another way around it too is we do have some clients who trade options and they are strictly in cash accounts. So if you didn't know, options cash accounts actually clear T plus one as long as you you know buy and sell everything in that same day. So it, it is possible to trade every single day a cash secured options account and your trades clear T plus one so you can actually trade every single day. So again, the $25,000 is not the floor. However, if you meet every other criteria, then we'll pass you as a trader. But um, the PDT is something that we do look for. So trading does not have to be your primary means of income. However, the motive is obviously to be successful and to produce a profit. Now, if you have multiple sources of income, this is not a deal breaker. However, a lot of our clients like to utilize entity structures, which allow them to uh, incorporate or put their trading business in a corporation, which is separate of their tax return. Now, what this does is this allows you to one, legitim legitimize your business and also um, you know, it keeps it separate of your other business interests. So just something to keep in mind. So another thing to keep in mind is that if you trade in an IRA account, these will not be counted towards the trader status test or the behave test. So tax deferred accounts do not qualify for um, trader status. All right, so now that you completely understand what it means to be an active day trader for tax purposes, you get two things. One, you get to deduct all of your business expenses whether that's education, whether that's home office, whether that's stock locate fees, um, traveling to news con or to uh, meetups and conferences, many of these things, many of these benefits you get as an active day trader is full business expense treatment. The other thing you get is you get the opportunity to elect what's called mark to market accounting. So if you don't know what mark to market is, we do have some other videos out where we talk about mark to market. So I'll link those below and feel free to check those out. So moral of the story is if you plan to become an active day trader for tax purposes, or if you want to continue to pursue this profession, it's important that you at least have a very high level understanding that as an active day trader, the IRS rewards you for carrying out your activity with regularity and continuity. And that once you've established that you qualify then you can use an assortment of benefits to include you know, business expense treatment, mark to market, and then you can also take it a step further and integrate entities where you can uh, unlock some additional tax savings. So as always, if you are unsure, feel free to reach out to our firm and book a paid consultation with me and I'll gladly uh, hash out any issues that you may have. So as always, wanted to thank you for your attention and thank you for um, subscribing to the channel and I look forward to producing future videos for the trading community. Have a good one.